Welcome. We are in the Logical Operators chapter of Learn to Code 1, and we're doing the third activity, checking this and that. The goal of this activity is to use the AND operator to combine two conditions and adjust your path if both are true. Okay, the AND operator is what we call a logical operator, and the way it works is that it combines two Boolean conditions or two Boolean values and runs a certain block of code only if both condition 1 and condition 2 are true. Okay, so if you separate two Boolean conditions with an AND operator, both of the conditions have to be true in order for your code to run. There's an example down here that says if the condition is blocked and is on a closed switch are true, then we're going to toggle the switch. Okay, so the AND operator is indicated by the ampersand ampersand symbol in here. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at the puzzle. And in this puzzle there are uh, six gems and there are three switches that are closed and one switch that's already on. So uh, what we need to do is definitely collect all these gems that are on the main row. And we're going to have a for loop that goes from 1 to 7 down here to travel along the main row. Okay. So uh, we're definitely going to have to have a check in here to see if we're on a gem, then go ahead and collect it. But now, when do we want to go get these uh, closed switches? It's not all the time, is it? So can you look at this puzzle and can you see if there's a way to determine when you have to handle a closed switch uh, by looking at just sort of you know where the gems are and how the landscape is configured around byte? Okay, hopefully you see that one of the conditions is if there's a gem, then that's an indicator that there might be a switch here. But actually two conditions need to be true in order for there to be a switch over here that we need to get. One is there's a gem on the row, but also if we're blocked to the left, if we're blocked to the left, uh, then that will also indicate that we need to turn to the right and go get the, uh, go get the switch. Okay. So we're going to have an if statement in here somewhere that says uh, if we're both on a gem and we're blocked to the left by these little walls here, we're going to go handle these switches. Else if we're just on a gem and we're not blocked to the left, then we just want to collect the gem on that row. Okay. So the places where we're both blocked on the left and there's a gem are here, here, and here but the places where there are just gems and we're not blocked to the left are here, here, and here. Okay? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, try that in our code then. So we've got this new Boolean condition called is blocked left, okay? That will help us see when we're blocked to the left, okay? And we also want to use this ampersand ampersand or logical and operator to check if two conditions are true. So uh, let's go ahead and write that code. So inside this for loop we always want to move forward but then after we move forward we're going to want to see if we need to uh, both collect the gem and go get a switch or if we just need to collect the gem. Okay. So we said the conditions are if we're is on a gem is true, if we're on a gem and we're blocked to the left, is blocked to the left, then we want to go handle switch, go handle switch and collect the gem that we're on. Okay, that's going to take care of these uh, switches and gems right here because we're both on a gem and block to the left. Now the other case is if we're just on a gem 
then we just want to collect the gem. So we can use an else if there. Else if we're is on a gem, then we just want to collect the gem. Okay, so something like this. Now we haven't written our go handle switch yet, and uh, go handle switch. Uh, this is these is this is when we want to go take a diversion and go uh, turn on a switch that is closed over here. So that's a since we're going to do that three times, this is a good idea to abstract this code uh, into a single function, right? That has a single purpose, which is go collect that. I'm sorry, that go turn on that switch over there. So go handle switch. Well, uh, the first thing we need to do when we go handle switch is we need to turn to the right. So turn to the right. So we're facing the switch. Then two move forwards. So we could do that in a for loop or I in 1 to 2, move forward, okay, and now that we're on the switch, we can toggle the switch, and then turn around, so I can say turn around, we don't have that function yet, but we'll write that in a second, and then move back to the main row, so the main row, we could just um, do another for loop, um, so I'll just copy that and paste it down here, that's going to head us back to the main row. Now when we're on the main row, we want to end up facing the way we were to begin with. So let's go ahead and do a turn to the right. So we're facing the same way. So we'll end up on the exact same spot we left from, facing the same way that we were. Okay. Now uh, let's go ahead and do our turn around function. Long could turn around. And we can say turn left and turn left. Okay. So this let's just review what we have here. Just the, the main program for i in one to seven. Let's see one two three four five six seven. That'll take us to the end of this main row. And we want to check if both the conditions were on a gem and were blocked to the left. We want to go handle the switch, and then we want to come back and collect the gem. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we're just on a gem here, we just want to collect that gem, and then we'll come back down to the bottom of this for loop and go back up to the top and start it all over again with another move forward and another check. It looks like it should work. Uh, let's give it a try. Uh, I'll run the code here. In fact, I'm going to run it in step through my code mode. We can watch what's going on. In the for loop, we move forward. We check, are we on a gem and block left? No. Uh, we're just on a switch, on a gem, so we just collect the switch. There, we're on nothing. Here, we're just on a gem, so we collect the gem. Now, here's the first time we're both on a gem and we're blocked left, so we go up to go handle switch. This turns us to the right, moves forward to. We toggle the switch, we turn around. Then we go back and in a for loop, we move forward two and turn to the right. So we're facing just like we were before. Then we collect the gem and we go back up to our for loop. Here we're only on a gem, so we collect the gem. Here we in the for loop, we move forward and we're on a gem and block to the left. So we call go handle switch. And we saw that that worked fine before. Well, it should work fine now. Okay. Going back, okay, we're back into the for loop, move forward. We're both on a gem and blocked left, so we go handle switch, which again turns right, it moves forward two, we toggle the switch, we turn around, we do another for loop to move forward two, then we turn right. We're done with handle switch, so we go back and do our collect gem, and we're done. Okay, so we solved the puzzle, a single for loop here. It does a couple of things. Uh, first, we move forward, then we check. Are we on both a gem and blocked left? Are we on a tile where we're both on a gem and blocked left? If that's true, we do this block of code here where we go get handle the switch and we collect the gem. 
Else if only one of those conditions is true, the one where we're on a gem, then we just collect the gem. Okay, all right, good work. I'm gonna show you another way uh, to do this real quick, just so we can compare and contrast the two different ways. Um, you might find one of them you prefer more than the other. Uh, but I want to see both of these on the screen at the same time, but I don't want both of them to run. So I can show you a little trick here that sometimes programmers use. Uh, if they don't want some code to run, they turn it into a comment. Okay, So I can turn this into a comment by just putting a slash in here. Now, it's not really a comment. It's some code, but it's not going to run now because it has these two slashes in front of it. Okay, so let's try this again. Slash, 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 slash. Okay. And one more. And let's do this one as well. Okay, so now uh, this code will not run uh, because it's all uh, thinks it's a comment. And we can uncomment that and it will run, right? So I basically want to reproduce some of this down here. So there's a for loop for i in 1 to 7. But here's where things are going to get a little bit different. We're going to move forward every time, just like last time. This time, um, let me reset this code here, reset byte. So I'll say run my code and I'll stop it. Okay. So this time I'm noticing that every one of these, uh, or many of these rows, have a gem. And only some of the ones that have gems have switches on the rows. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to deal with the gems. And I'm going to say if we're is on gem, if we're on a gem, now if we're on a gem, I want to uh, collect a gem for sure. Because anytime we're on a gem, we want to collect the gem. Okay, the other thing I want to do in here is after I collect the gem, I might need to go handle that switch. But the way I know if I need to handle that switch is if I'm blocked to the left. Okay, So right after I collect the gem, I know I'm on a gem square. So inside here, I can also ask if I'm blocked to the left. Okay, If I'm blocked to the left, then I can call my go handle switch. OK, go handle switch. So let's look at what this does here. Uh, every time through, we're going to move forward. Then when we're on a tile, we're going to check if we're on a gem. If we are, we're going to collect that gem. But we're also going to ask ourselves, are we blocked to the left? And if we are, we're going to go handle the switch. If we're not, we're going to come down here and just go back up to the beginning of the for loop and move forward. So these two things are doing exactly the same thing. This code here and this code up here are doing exactly the same thing. Um, in fact, this go handle switch is only happening if both the cases were on a gem and were blocked to the left. Okay, how do we know that? Well, here we're on a gem. So anything that happens in this block, we know we're on a gem. Okay. Now, uh, if we are also inside this block, then we know that we're both block to the left is true and is on a gem is true because we're inside both of those. Okay. So this is essentially saying we are on a gem and we are block to the left because uh, we are inside this nested if statement. This if statement is nested inside the other if statement. So both of them have to be true in order for us to call our go handle switch function. Okay, so they're the same thing, really. They're doing the same thing, written just a little bit differently. Personally, I find this a little easier to read, this one up here. I find this a little easier to read because it's got this and symbol in here. So 
it reads a little bit more like natural language, which says, if we're on a gem and we're blocked, then go handle the switch and collect the gem. Else, if we're only on a gem, then collect the gem. I think that reads a little bit easier than having to keep track in here to say, well, we're on a gem, and then also we're inside here to say we're blocked to the left. But I thought I would show you that in case you find one way uh, that you prefer over the other way. Okay, uh, just to review here, we learned that there is such a thing as a logical operator. Okay, that's this ampersand, ampersand symbol in here. It means and, and it says if this condition is true and this condition is true, then we do the two things inside, or the, however, many, uh, however many commands you have inside the block. You do those only if both of them are true. Okay, so that's the logical and operator. Okay, let's just combine two Boolean expressions and decide to, to, to do some block of code only if both the one condition and the other condition are true at the same time. Okay, all right, my challenge for you today, however, is to take a look at these, this ampersand sim symbol and uh, take a good look at it, and then uh, after you close your uh, playgrounds, close your iPad up, see if you can draw one of those on a piece of paper. It's trickier than it looks. All right. Have a good day. We'll see you next time.